We've already looked at M Auto Dynamic EQ's more traditional EQ controls, but now let's examine the plugin's dynamic EQ functions. Static EQ boosts or cuts remove the same amount of frequency content irrespective of the input signal. A dynamic EQ, on the other hand, can boost or attenuate frequencies in response to the level of an input signal. By default, the plugin will listen to a band's particular affected frequency range to then trigger dynamics processing over that band when it reaches over a certain dB level. This internal trigger signal is known as the sidechain signal. Now we'll open the bands panel. A 0 dB dynamics amount means that no dynamics processing will occur. Over in the EQ display, pulling down the vertical node on an EQ band will reduce its dynamics amount, and this parameter can also be adjusted in the bands panel. Negative values cause a band to attenuate in relation to the input signal and the louder the input signal, the more attenuation will occur. Although this attenuation amount will never exceed this dynamics parameter's value. So imagine the dynamic control of multiband compression combined with the frequency attenuating precision of parametric equalization. So to illustrate this process, here we're using this technique over a full drum loop. We've initially focused this band on our drum loop's prominent upper-mid snare frequencies at around 2.2k. And by pulling down the dynamics parameter, our EQ notch only attenuates this region when triggered by the frequency area we're isolating. And this dynamics parameter sets the amount of boost or cut. And this exact technique can be used to turn M Auto Dynamic EQ into a precise de -esser. so you can notch out harsh sibilance from a vocal performance. Now the reverse of this. Positive values cause a band to boost in relation to the input signal. So the louder the input signal, the more boosting that will occur but again, never above the dynamics value we've set. So in this example, a low shelf is boosting the kick's lower frequencies, but only when triggered by low frequencies that the band's affecting, i.e. every time the low frequencies of the kick exceed our dynamics amount. Just like a regular dynamics processor, we have attack and release controls to modify how quickly our dynamic modification will begin and end. Generally, you'll want to keep attack times shorter than release times. When both set to auto, the band acts in opto mode. As we've explored, the dynamics parameter sets the amount of gain, boost or cut. The threshold sets the dB level that must be exceeded before any boost or cut will happen. It's set to silence by default. Now let's go deeper. Right click on a band's number on the EQ display, or hit this button here to open that band's settings menu. In the dynamic section, we can access the controls available that we've already tweaked in the bands menu. So we've got dynamics, attack, release and threshold. A band's sidechain signal might not have high enough level to trigger any dynamics processing. 
So the level gain parameter controls the gain of the current sidechain signal, allowing you to increase the sidechain's gain if it's too quiet. And this level can be observed on the level meter here. And dynamic boost or gain, either compression below 0 dB or expansion above 0 dB, can be observed on the gain meter. When set to 100%, the link channels parameter means that both the stereo left and right channels are controlled by the levels of both equally. This applies the same amount of processing to both channels, preserving levels between them. Decreasing this will separate the linking between the left and right channels, with 0% being completely unlinked. Now remember that a band is reacting to the appropriate filtered signal, so if we've set up a low shelf, then the sidechain signal will consist of the low frequency areas under that shelf. So the various modes here control how this band reacts to our sidechain signal. The default filtered compensated mode takes the sidechain signal and compensates for level differences that can occur across the frequency spectrum. Useful when dealing with a complex full frequency signal. Filtered mode is similar but the previous level compensations are not applied, which is more useful when processing a sound that sits in its own particular frequency region, like a bass line, for example. Entire spectrum mode, as you might guess, removes any filtering or compensation and simply uses the entire input signal as the sidechain trigger for that band. The enable button can be used to turn the dynamics processing on and off, fairly straightforward and the advanced panel lets you modify the band's sidechain signal even further. The shape menu changes the way in which the sidechain input's gain is interpreted, allowing you to change between linear, logarithmic and squared shapes. In the bandpass section, you can further filter the band's sidechain input. Hitting the speaker icon allows you to monitor the sign chain signal in isolation as you filter it. These filters let you focus upon a completely different portion of your signal to the area you're processing. Especially if you switch the mode to entire spectrum. So for example, you can focus the sidechain signal upon a mid-range snare, so it then triggers dynamics processing over the very lows of a bass drum. The level transformation graph lets you transform the dynamic gain according to the input level. The x-axis controls input level and the y-axis controls the output level. These changes can be observed on the level and gain meters. Here's a quick example of the plugin's dynamic EQ functions in action. We're using dynamic EQ notching to remove harsh sibilance from a voiceover. Sometimes vocal performances can contain excessively harsh sibilance. 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 Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android and in print.